actually is uh, Earth and Ocean Sciences 350, uh, environmental, geotechnical, exploration, geophysics. So we're all good to go with that. That sounds good. <laughs> um, got a few new toys here to play with. Uh, I guess I'd first of all like to find out who you are, and then I'm going to tell you who I am. Uh, so how, how, many, uh, how many people here are actually in geology? Good. More than last year. And then engineers? Ah, the preponderance, yes. <laughs> uh, anybody else from EOS? Yeah, what, what part? I'm exchange, exchange students, but I do environmental geoscience. Exchange from? Uh, the UK, Crystal. Um, and anybody else? Yeah. Uh, geoscience. Geographical Science. Oh, okay. And are you a fourth year student or a graduate student? Yeah. Any professionals? Not yet. Soon. Okay, who am I? I I'm Doug. I'm a professor here in, uh, uh, in geophysics. I'm director of what's called the Geophysical Inversion Facility. Uh, I'm up in uh, the Earth Sciences Building up on the on the fifth floor, and uh, here's my my, my email. Uh, my background uh, it's really, I guess the last I don't even want to say how many years, but oh, quite a few. Uh, really, on the application of geophysics to solve applied problems, whether they be in you know exploration or environmental or geotechnical. Uh, we're trying to find ways of actually making uh, geophysics really useful in solving problems, and, and that is, in fact, what this uh, course is, uh, is today. So I kind of want to start this off, too, by uh, getting a, an impression from the audience. Like, does anybody know, like, what is geophysics? Uh, I personally have had a uh, a lot of experiences where you go to a party, right, and uh, you know everybody's in, they're introducing themselves, and somebody says, "Oh yeah, I'm a nurse," and they say, "Oh yeah, that's so great. We love nurses all the time. We love nurses." And somebody else says, "Oh yeah, well, they, you know, auto body mechanic," and yeah, like, oh yeah, that's so useful, right? And then I say, uh, "I'm a geophysicist." That's it, right? It's just like, okay, <laughs> so uh, maybe it's worthwhile. Just kind of get a, anybody uh, hazard a, a definition for, for geophysics, or perhaps anybody who's had experience. Anybody? Yes? I helped do a uh, SP survey this summer. Uh -huh. I set up a seismic survey as well. So I do all the setting up for a geophysical survey. Perfect. And where was the SP survey and what was it for? Uh, we did it on uh, a Harvard Ah. And we were just we had the maps of the hill together, and it was supposed to uh, be very stable over the ground far away from the ore bodies, which were the sulfide ore bodies, and then it was supposed to dip over the ore bodies, and it did. So I think it's just double checking the boundaries of uh, how the map is the ore body. Oh, that's that's perfect. You couldn't believe how well that fits in because we've got a group of students here uh, working on Highland Valley copper. Pause it. Ah, okay, well, there we go. <laughs> and we also have people working on SP, which stands for self-potential, and it's a technique that uh, is possibly used for dam safety. So BC Hydro is, uh, is interested in this. Uh, I have a Korean uh, scientist who's spending a year here. Uh, Korea has got 17,000 of these earth dams, and they're trying to monitor them. And uh, one of the geophysical techniques is self potential, and they're seeing if they can uh, use that. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce to you the most important element of this course, and that is the TA team. Uh, geophysics 350 is something that uh, a great number of us are, are very passionate about because. As you'll see, geophysics has got a huge role to play in solving a whole bunch of problems. Uh, we're trying to develop this course 
into uh, a showcase course that would be distributed worldwide. Uh, it's developed as an open, we're developing it now as an open source resource on the, on the web so that uh, it's material that anybody anywhere can, uh, can interact with. There's a number of parts of this course. There's the lecture part where I get to stand up and say something. Uh, there's also team-based learning parts of this course. There's quizzes. There's uh, labs. Uh, we're developing interactive apps so that you can uh, explore the different concepts and try to really understand what's going on. This actually is requiring a huge effort. And uh, there's supposed to be, here's the team. Uh, technically, as far as the university is concerned, we're allowed to have two TAs. That's not quite enough. Uh, so last year, I thought we had the A plus team. And we did. These guys were great. But this year, we've got the A plus plus team. So I'd just like to introduce a couple of them. Uh, so first of all, Dom Fournier, who's back, back there. Uh, Dom's a PhD. Uh, student and uh, was involved in the course last year and is uh, sort of the head TA this year. Uh, Thibaut Asik, who's uh, taking another course this time, but he's the guy that was working on, on Highland Valley uh, Copper. Uh, Patrick Bellavo, Patrick's back there, is PhD student uh, with LDAD. Uh, Devin Corrin, who just finished his master's degree and uh, decided he needed to have a break and so he's out hiking someplace. <laughs> uh, Soggy Kang, over there. Uh, Soggy's from Korea. He's finishing up his, uh, his, his PhD. Uh, and then there's Lindsay Higgy, who's back there. She's, she's our technical person here, <laughs> as well as knowing a lot about geophysics. But she is the only reason that things are kind of hooked up like they are. And if you notice back there, there's uh, a webcam on a tripod. So we're taping live to be streamed. Uh, this is going to YouTube. Uh, right now, it's on a private, uh, it's on a private channel. Um, but we're going to you know, ask permission of, of people. We just have your backs. So the only, thing we, the only thing that we can see right now are your backs and if you have your laptops open and are watching a movie. <laughs> Just to let you know. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see how all this works. There's a number of reasons for, for doing it. Uh, one is the longevity of this uh, information. The other is, as I said, we're trying to make this open source. And this is potentially a course that uh, you know, has got application. You, know, you can see this course being presented all at a whole bunch of places across the world. And uh, so if you have all the resource material and you've got some guys sort of talking about some slides, then that might be useful. The other thing that might be useful for students is that you know if things are captured, and you know you get confused about you know material, uh, you could actually go back to the lecture and like kind of rewind and sit in there and say, oh, okay, that's okay. Right so that's uh, that's the goal there. I'm going to, today's like is a really light day, right? We just kind of feeling each other out at this point, and I'm going to tell you a bit about the technical details of the course uh, a little bit later. But before I do that, I kind of want to set the scene. And I'm just going to show you some pictures, uh, and just going to be images of things that I, I, I kind of hope that you will uh, relate to. And I want you to think about, as we're looking at these, uh, at these pictures, uh, what you might do if you were faced with a situation and you had a problem like this, how you might get some information and try to help solve the problem. Okay, So engineers, you guys have uh, got a tried and true technique. You're going to drill, sample, right? Uh, and that's quite valuable. But just take a look at these, at these pictures. So the first one is, is finding resources. So what do we have? Well, maybe we've got uh, minerals, uh, hydrocarbons. <coughs> Society runs off of this stuff. But there's also other things, uh, geothermal energy. Uh, and 
now more and more, and this is actually becoming one of the most important issues, has to do with groundwater, where it is, what the integrity of, of it is. So, you know, here's problems. Uh, you know, you need to somehow find, uh, you know, where those things are. That's resources. Then we've got natural hazards. Uh, we have volcanoes. Go off, cause destruction. Uh, tsunami, this was a picture from the uh, one in, uh, in Japan a few years ago. Um, and then we've got earthquakes, which we could continue to see. Geotechnical engineering, uh, you know, especially in places like uh, British Columbia, where we got you know lots of mountains, we often have to you know dig tunnels through the mountains uh, through there. We have issues about slope stability. Uh, just go up the Sea to Sky Highway, right, and uh, have to worry about that. And then a big problem that uh, we're constantly faced with this in mine safety. If you're you know, drilling down into the earth and uh, going to mine things out, water is the big issue. So you need to figure out you know, where is there water and uh, try to understand that environment. We've got environmental concerns. This is becoming more and more important as time goes on. Water contamination, you know, factories, and whatever, just dumping sludge out into the water, which gradually gets through uh, into our water supply. Uh, or you could have salt water intrusion. This is also becoming a bigger issue. Uh, then we've got zones of current military conflict and past military conflict, giving rise to you know, a whole bunch of bombs that are unexploded, hence unexploded ordnance and you need to find those guys. And then we've also got just storage, uh, either on the surface or on underground. Uh, probably most people have heard of carbon sequestration where you know, we've got uh, permeable layers underneath here and you're gonna try to you know, pump carbon down into there. Or you've got aquifer storage and recovery. So in times of plenty, you wanna just store the water and then in the summertime, you know, pump it back out again. And sometimes you just got nasty stuff. You just got industrial waste or nuclear waste and uh, you gotta somehow store that stuff. So that's a whole bunch of problems. And uh, so what maybe you're flashing through your mind is from your own particular background, like, okay, if I was faced with that, what can I contribute? How would I, how would I help? What pieces of information would I provide? Or, or, or what would I do in, in this case? And the thing that I wanted to kind of bring your problems that are to your attention is that all of these problems actually have something in common. And the thing that they have in common is that they require ways to see into the earth without direct sampling. So sometimes you simply couldn't sample. Sometimes you cause harm by sampling. Sometimes it could just be so inefficient because you know you're just drilling holes on some kind of a pattern and you're just missing what you've got. Uh, so you need to find some way of finding what's there uh, without direct sampling. And effectively, by definition, geophysics is really the uh, the only discipline that's uh, devoted to that goal. So already, I think. Uh, those pictures should spur your uh, interest a, a little bit with respect to, oh my gosh, this stuff uh, could really be quite uh, useful. So I, just a, a couple of brief, brief, brief statements. Uh, just comment like, who uses geophysics? Well, anybody that has got a, uh, you know, a problem and we're going to talk about what kinds of problems uh, that's connected with different kinds of physical properties uh, would use geophysics and they'd go out with some kind of uh, instrument and uh, you know then you'd collect some data and those data might tell you something all by themselves or maybe you have to do some processing on it to get to, to get an image but that's kind of the idea you've got a problem you've got you collect some take some field measurements, get some data, you process it, try to get a picture that's going to help you understand your uh, solution to your problem. So what is this course? 
we got uh, 12 weeks. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. The only thing that we can do is just kind of give you an introduction to what applied geophysics is, uh, give you an idea of what kind of information you might get out, and, and how to approach a problem uh, using, geophysics, or using geophysics. What the course is not is some kind of mathematical treatment that's really complicated. There's hardly any mathematics in, in, in this course, but there's a lot of thought stuff that going, that's going on. And really, the overall goal, and I, I think if, if this could be accomplished, it'd be, it'd be quite successful, is that by the time you leave this course, when faced with a problem, you'd have a, a framework by which to decide, OK, is geophysics potentially useful? What kind of survey would I use? Kind of the idea about how that survey works and you know what the data might look like, and importantly, what uh, information you might uh, glean from, from that. So that's that's the essence. I mean, in, in fact, you guys are not going to be geophysicists. You're going to go out. You're going to be actually. You're probably going to be some manager of a company that's going to hire a geophysicist. Uh, so that's why it's important that you know what's going on. And uh, yeah, so that's that's our sort of main. Maybe. Uh, maybe your expectations for the course? I don't know them, but uh, first of all, uh, you might get some new knowledge. The basics of geophysics, some physics, a little math, not much. And mostly it's applications, sort of connecting a whole bunch of problems that you might uh, become involved with, uh, with, with the geophysical techniques. Uh, you might get some new skills. Uh, maybe using, trying to understand, okay, how can I use this geophysical information to actually make decisions? Especially for the engineers here, that's a, that's a big thing, right? Because you go out and you have to uh, you know, decide you know, what to do to ameliorate something or whether to, you know, to build something, uh, get some geophysical information, how do we actually use that? And uh, attitudes. Uh, you know, geophysics, like that uh, conversation stopper, is actually not very scary, right? And uh, so just because it's got the word physics in it, some people think, oh, that's going to be really tough, uh, but it's actually not. And it's, uh, I, I think most people find it uh, extremely rewarding when they actually do understand some of the basic physics, because then things are not such a black box. And I think there's nothing so empowering as just understanding what's going on. So we're going to try to give you a little bit of that. Uh, just a few more details about the about the course. Um, so that the major topics we're, we're going to start off with, and this is this week and next, uh, kind of give you a, a framework for how to apply geophysics. It's something called a seven-step procedure, and we're going to talk about physical properties, and by these I mean things like electrical conductivity, magnetic susceptibility, uh, density, and for, for each of those properties, uh, there's going to be surveys that are going to be done to get some information about that. So in, you know, we do a magnetic survey to find out something about the magnetic susceptibility, we might do a ground penetrating radar to find out something about electrical permittivity or a DC experiment to find something out about electrical conductivity. So we're, we're going to kind of work with, uh, in, in little modules here, each one is connected with a particular type of survey that you will, will come across, and each one of them has got a connection with a particular physical property. The, uh, the emphasis throughout all this is understanding. So just to kind of understand the basics of what's going on and then have uh, you know, some reasonable expectation for when a survey should be taken and what sort of information uh, you might get. So the, uh, again, that sort of overall, the, the course goals here are to 
you know, kind of give you the key concept about you know what the role of applied geophysics is, uh, you know, physical properties, surveys, etc. Uh, some practical facility with uh, geophysical methods, just so that you know what these things are. A magnetic survey, because how many people have come across a magnetic map? Okay, a few. So by the end of this course, you'll have uh, you know a much better understanding about okay, what is that map? What is what are the pictures that are kind of in that map? How do I understand them? Something else that I think is is important uh, with respect to the goals and something that's useful, uh, basically developing uh, professional skills. We're going to be working in teams and. So there's going to be, you know, some assessment uh, of accomplishment, uh, you know, with respect to that team and working to, together. And, and the thing is that uh, this is good for your personal growth and also employers really, uh, that's one of the things they want to see of the, of the students, that they have this team working uh, skill set. And lastly, uh, kind of like you'd be uh, kind of excited about what, uh, what geophysics can do for your profession. So we're going to approach this in multiple ways. I, I think that the, the trick here is to have you see the same concept in a number from a number of different formats, like from a lecture slide, from a team-based learning, from a quiz, from a lab, and we're trying to have that same concept presented in slightly different ways with the unifying thing being these interactive apps that are, are, are being developed. And then by the end of it, you, you kind of get it, right? Because this way might be a little bit better for some people, or this might be better for others. But by the time you kind of go through this and have uh, repetition, then uh, yeah, then I say you, you, you got it. And then there's uh, team-based learning and activities that are both uh, in-class work, and then there's some team-based quizzes. I'll talk a bit about those in a second. Yes, so here's my important slide. Uh, the goal here is to, uh, to learn. And learning comes through engagement, and if you're engaged, you can actually also have some fun doing it, right? So that's good, what we don't want is this, okay? So, no Facebook. I mean, everybody tells you this stuff, right? But sometimes it doesn't matter. But, you know, no movies, no Facebook, no engaging in, in, in other activities. You come here, you pay attention. We put a lot of work and effort into developing this course. So you've got that whole A++ team, myself, and we're trying to present to you what we think is Perhaps one of the best courses you'll have taken at university. So that means if you come here, you pay attention. If you don't want to pay attention, I'm happy not to have you show up. But just, that's, it's sort of an either or. And besides, we, now we have this camera so we can watch when you're watching movies. Ah. Okay. Um, our material, uh, there's two things. There's, there's a course website. And I'm going to take you through that, if this works. So when you click on that, you get to uh, what happened there. So I see something on my screen that's not there. Uh, what do we have to do? Escape? Yeah, try using escape. There you go. Now just click on that guy. Oh, maybe I need to get him. No. No? Um, escape. Uh, just right click on it, two fingers. Uh, and just copy. Do you want me to do this? Yeah. Okay. What happened there? It's a learning curve. It'll come. 
That is the website. Yeah. So I just copy pasted it there. Oh. Uh -uh. Okay. Well, we might. Uh, okay. Here we go. So here's our website. And. So we've got lecture times, we've got labs. Uh, here's, here's the contact information for all of the, uh, all of the, the TAs. And the thing that is most important here is this thing called the course schedule. Uh, this is a document that is kind of like your right hand man as you go through this course. Because there's a lot of things happening. We've got as I say, you know, lectures and team-based learnings and labs and, and, and stuff like this. And you need to, you, you kind of need to be able to keep track of, of where you are. And both for yourselves and for ourselves, it's this guy here that keeps us going. So here we are. We're 7th of September. We're in week one. Uh, that's the goal. We've got, you know, introduction, course goals. <laughs> And there's some required readings. There's the syllabus. So if you click on here, then you'll get sort of a, a PDF of you know, what the, uh, the syllabus is for the course. So you could read that. And then there's GPG. Uh, I'll tell you more about that in, in, in a second. And then there's the intro lecture. So just the slides that I'm showing you. So these are all clickable downloadable, and this kind of tells you where you're at. So we're endeavoring to have all of this kind of up to date as far as what you need, like the week before you actually come in here. So there's a whole bunch of things in here. A lot of them, if you click on it, nothing is, is going to happen. But eventually, as we go through, then that, that will happen. So this is your this is your guide to figuring out okay where are we what are we doing what am I responsible for and what's going to happen of course yes um, so now actually so if we click on GPG which stands for Geophysics for Practicing uh, Geoscientists. This is our web-based resource that is going to have essentially, I, I think, virtually all the material or links to all the material that you're going to need uh, throughout, the, throughout the course. It's in a, a state of uh, massive reconstruction at, at this point, but will continue to stay uh, a, a ahead of the game. Uh, for instance, in what I'm asking you to read for the very first, well, for, for this first week, is something called Foundations. And in Foundations, you know, there's something called Seeing Underground, and then there's, you know, an introduction, and uh, kind of tells you a little bit about how, th how things are going, and then there's uh, you know, a geophysics primer that tells you a little bit about what's going on. And you can kind of click through here and, and get some information. So I, I'm not going to take you, take you through that. But that resource is the uh, sort of the composite of all of the information that, uh, that, that you're going to need. Thanks, Patrick. Um, There we go. So the website, which is uh, kind of tells you where to go, it's got the course syllabus on it, and it'll also have the links to the labs and, and various things like that. And then we've got the, the, the GPG, which is your, your resource. A uh, couple of housekeeping items. There's a lab. Uh, some people had conflicts with uh, lab A and lab B. Uh, has everybody got 
a lab ID and has got that straightened out. Anybody? Good. Okay. So then that's uh, fine. Here's the slide everybody's always interested in. Uh, there's a lot of components in, in, in this course, and we're trying to break it down in such a way that uh, it makes some sense. So there's exams, which are worth about half of the value of the course. There's a final, it's a two-hour final, so it's 35%. There's a midterm for, for 18. Uh, there's labs. That's perhaps one of the major ways of actually learning material in, in the course. I think students find that the labs are things that kind of really consolidate uh, things for them. There's uh, individual quizzes. So at the end of each section, so we'll have a section on magnetics and a section on seismology. Uh, at the end of that, there'll be a little quiz. So it's a uh, multiple choice quiz. And you will do that uh, individually. And then you will also do that same quiz in your teams. So we're going to divide the whole group up here into teams of about five or six people per team. And you're going to be with those team members for the, the whole year. And uh, you're going to kind of work together on, on various things. There's team-based learning exercises where we hand out a case history. Uh, we would ask you to you know, read that beforehand. So we might give you a case history and then you, you might start off the next day with uh, a, a small quiz in that about that case history, and then you'd go and you'd do part of that with uh, with, with the team. So there's uh, individual work and teamwork that's uh, that's required. There's a huge amount of marketing. Uh, what we tried. Previous, up until last year, uh, we tried to mark everything really thoroughly, and uh, it, it just turned out that it was too much work for the TAs, and actually the students didn't really get very much out of it either. So it was kind of useless work. So what we did last year, we introduced uh, you know a check plus type of, uh, of procedure, which. How many people have had uh, experience with that with labs? Is that becoming pretty common? And, and any comments about it? Working, doesn't work? It should be really disastrous. So it's like, nah, it doesn't work. Because that's what we're doing. Uh, anyway, so we give you a check plus. You, you, you do what's required, uh, and you do, do a pretty reasonable job, you get a check, right? If you do a spectacular job, you get a check plus. If you do a less hard a job, you get a check minus. If you're really crappy, kind of get into this region. And I don't know. We haven't figured out what the zero is. But if, I guess if you don't hand anything in, it just uh, gets you zero. Uh, the TAs. Uh, oh, so office hours. Um, I kind of have an open door policy, but I'm also really hard to get a hold of. So if you want to get a hold of me, you should make an appointment. Uh, your best bet, though, is to try one of the TAs. And within each of the sections that we've got on the right-hand side of the schedule, there is kind of like a principal TA. So there'll be a lot of people that kind of know everything. But there'll be one person that is uh, like, OK, this has been his. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, his main contribution to the, you know to the labs and the uh, resource material, and you could use him first. Uh, uh, any questions thus far? You guys are so quiet. All right. So just a couple of pictures. That, Kind of uh, hopefully stimulate you a little bit. Uh, if we go, can we go back to those uh, images th that we saw, then the, um, the the purpose of geophysics was really basically to provide 
information. So you go out, you do a geophysical survey, you collect some data, and you know the data might be maps, uh, a two-dimensional image, it might just be a profile, it might be a series of time traces, or, or, or some other kind of, kind of graph. So we'll, we'll see a whole bunch of ways in which data can be plotted and which uh, might extract some information out of them. And the interpretation is always in terms of these things called physical properties, which I'll talk a lot more about on, on Friday. And we first use the data to try to find out something about the physical properties, and then we'll use that information about the physical properties to translate to our geologic or geotechnical problems. So that's, that's kind of the procedure. And uh, just to do a couple of examples. So this is a physical survey. It's so up here, it's got EM31. That stands for an electromagnetic instrument. You're actually going to see that instrument uh, dur during the course. And we got a we got a picture here. Uh, on this vertical axis is something called apparent conductivity. So conductivity tells you how easily it is for current to pass through. So uh, as you go up on this scale, somehow you're dealing with materials that pass current easily. And uh, if you go down the scale, you're dealing with materials that don't pass current nearly as easily. Well, on this axis, it's line position. So the experiment is one in which somebody's got a, uh, a, a geophysical instrument, and they're just simply walking along a line, and they're recording these data. So even this, I mean, it's very simple, but it's actually telling you some information. So in this region in here, stuff is uh, highly conductive compared to over here. So there's clearly some kind of a, uh, of, of a transition here. And geologically, what it's trying, what it's talking about is that you've got, you know, you've got high values over here and, and, and low values over here. And you have to appreciate that surface, and this was at the, uh, one of the local aquifers just outside of Vancouver, uh, at the surface all looked the same. I mean, all kind of grassy and, you know, you couldn't tell anything over there. But if you, if you walk across there, uh, you see like, oh, something is happening over here compared to over there. So it's giving you some information. That's useful. Uh, here's an image. It's a map. So this is, you know, uh, X and Y coordinates. Uh, the color scale on here is obtained. Uh, these are magnetic data. So this is uh, an airborne survey. The instrument is called a magnetometer. And the reds are high values, the blues are low values, and if you just try to concentrate on the, on the colors, you, you see like, oh, there's stuff happening. You look at this red color, it's kind of going around like this, or this one's coming here, or there's, there's clearly something that's coming in, in, in here, right? There's, there's a geologic texture, there's a feeling there for the relationship between the magnitude of this geophysical data and stuff that's that, that's happening, and on the lines here, as well as the uh, annotations, uh, this is ge you know this is geology that has been been printed on, on here, and it's got you know felsic volcanics over here, and different kinds of fault structures over here, and basalts up here. So there's there's geology as superimposed on the geophysics, and you can start to see how that geophysical map is actually providing some geologic uh, information. You can get information just by looking at the data, but you can also get further information by taking those data and doing a processing step, which we call inversion, to get a three-dimensional distribution of what's happening inside. So that's sort of another level of working with the data, but you now get 
more detailed information. And in cases like this, uh, you actually might even be able to spot a you know, place to put a drill hole. I mean, if this was the target of, of interest, then like, okay, let's put a drill hole through there and see what we've got. So that's the, that, that's the kind of thing you've got. We've got data. We might be able to get some information just by looking at the data, or we could do some more processing. Uh, another example. This is this guy is here. It's a it's called a seismic experiment. So he's got a hammer and he's hitting on a base plate, uh, and we've got some recording devices up here. And, and here's a trace of uh, information that we get from the recorders, and you know you get a suite of uh, of traces that that are coming in due to a succession of, of recording devices and you start to get you know get maybe some structure that that's coming through so that's telling you perhaps some information about what's there this is what's happening on a you know more global scale so this is a a, a, a surface a traverse that that's going along here each one of these is one of those seismic traces Kind of hard to see, you know, very much about what's going on, but you you can actually see that there's certain things that are coming in here, and so with a trained eye and knowing something about what you're looking for, you might come up with uh, more of a geologic interpretation that's got units that 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 look like that, and that kind of structure might actually be really useful. For you. So again, it's a way of uh, peering into the earth without actually uh, drilling. And here's another one. Again, this one is, is is magnetics. In this particular case, what was it? So this is a data here. So this is a kind of like a, a northing and easting, and the reds are high magnitudes and the blues are low. So you got a picture here. And uh, in, in this particular case, what was really of interest was you know, what the structure was uh, beneath beneath the surface, the geologists had a had a, had an idea about how the ore was forming. This is in a place in northern Quebec called Raglan, and you know they thought that the ore was kind of coming up in cylinders that looked like this. Uh, if you take the the data and you do that process of inversion, uh, you now can get an image of the interior of the structure of the Earth that kind of looks like this. So the the regions of high magnetism sort of outcrop here and the outcrop here, but they're actually sort of connected in, in between. So you get a you do a you get a geophysical image tells you something about the structure. In this case, what it told you differed from what the geologist had, had thought. But in this particular case, also you could drill, which they did, and they actually verified. So here's a case where geophysics and geology can kind of work together to uh, help understand what's there. And in, up for, for Raglan, uh, that actually caused the geologists to change their ideas about how the mineral deposit were formed. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea about so what the course is what the course is going to be like, some of the details about where things are. So <clears throat> go look at the, uh, at the course website, look at the GPG, look at the syllabus, look at the schedule. Okay, so you can kind of work all through, through, through that. Um, I'd like you for next time to read the section on foundations. So in that, there's going to be something called the seven-step process. It's a way that we're going to kind of fold everything together, and uh, it's going to help tie our, our information for these various kinds of, of problems. Uh, and it gives you some background about geophysics and just kind of gets you, gets you going, talks about the different surveys. So if you do that, then what I'm going to do on Friday, it's still kind of introduction week, right? So I, I'm going to give you another lecture on kind of 
background of applied geophysics and kind of general in introduction. But we're going to go a little bit deeper, right? So a bit more, a little bit more substance, and try to kind of you know build you up. And that'll give you that'll give you enough background so that the following week we can do something on physical properties, and you'll have a lab about physical properties and uh, yeah, be able to kind of work with some instruments. And actually, from our experience last year, it was. It, the physical properties lab was really interesting to people because you, geologists or engineers have uh, a certain way of characterizing a rock, right? So you, you pick a rock up and, you know, it's got texture, it's got color, maybe it's got smell or taste or whatever you guys do. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it, anyway, so you, you've got your way of describing that rock, but a geophysicist has got a different set of properties that they use, so the susceptibility, the conductivity, I mean, things that you know how easy it is to be magnetized or how easy it is to you know have current flow through. And sometimes rocks will look exactly the same, you know, from the perspective of a geologist description. But you look at it geophysically, and it's like, wait a minute, these guys are really different. And sometimes the other thing goes. So it's clearly complementary information, but just the fact that you've got a whole different set of words and understanding to describe these rocks, people found really interesting. So our what we're what we're going to do here is have one lecture, kind of continually introduce things, but introduce that seven step procedure, and then we'll do uh, some stuff on physical properties, and then we'll start our first element of magnetic. So read foundations, and uh, we should be good to go. Good. Uh, now, before you go, I need to take your picture. Uh, why do we do that? Because... <laughs> 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 